Breaking news now at 6, a Dearborn County neighborhood on alert. Why the state police SWAT team is still on the scene. Breaking overnight, a man fighting for his life after a shooting in Winton Terrace. The search for the suspect now underway. This is not a good scene at all. The Reds defending their home field. It wasn't about baseball, you know, it was about protecting my teammates. But the team is saying about the bench clearing ball. This food just put a gun on. Armed and dangerous, a store clerk held at gunpoint. She describes her face-to-face -face encounter with the suspect who is still on the run. Paddling with a purpose, hundreds of people get ready to take on the Ohio River at Paddle Fest Sunrise Paddle, who the race will help. Breaking news on nine on your side. We are following breaking news in traffic. Crews responding to a crash at the cut in the hill coming into the city. Let's go right to Cena Gebrab. Julie, here is that crash on our big map here. It is Kyle's Lane here, 7175 North. You can see the red and how far it extends. That backup goes to Dixie Highway and is probably creeping towards Buttermilk at this point. Let's take a live look at our camera there. It's a bit uh, hazy here, but you can see all the emergency vehicles. Traffic is not at a standstill at Kyle's Lane. It seems to be moving, but very slowly. And if we take a look at Dixie Highway at some of that congestion as well, it's here when the super goes away. You'll see it. This camera is a little slow, so it's not, again, at a standstill. This is probably a 10, 15 minutes delay right now your drive time from Florence to downtown, 18 minutes, but that delay could grow. Jennifer. Well, Cena, I'm watching out for fog for us as well this morning. So I want to start with the camera just actually not far from there. 7175 at Turfway and no doubt about it. You can see the fog that is not to the point where you, you can't see out there on the highway. Um, a lot of it is higher up there, but Visibility is definitely down and a lot of this is at its thickest south of the Ohio River, but in Lebanon even at times I've seen the visibility drop to a half mile. CVG officially has pea soup fog. We are down to almost a tenth of a mile of visibility that basically equates to not very much. Lunkin's down to a quarter mile and this all extends out along the Ohio River. Now temperatures are in the mid 60s with the fog and temperatures today will only make it back to the low 80s. Rain is back this afternoon. It's not like yesterday, but I'll take you through that hour by hour timing ahead. All right, Jennifer, breaking now. A victim is in critical condition after a shooting in Winton Terrace. This is the scene from last night on Garden Hill Lane near Winesti Avenue. Police say the victim is 19 years old, was shot twice. They don't have any suspects yet. There is more breaking news. This is in Dearborn County. Police responding to an active standoff situation. We have our nine on your sides, uh, Ali Kramer, live at the scene right now. Ali. Julie and this uh, standoff here in Dearborn County, just off north of Dearborn and State Line Roads, has been going on for almost eight hours now. We're actually being kept quite a way away from the scene here, but we can see state police state police lights rather uh, there in the distance and those officers are telling us that one man has barricaded himself inside a residence and won't come out. We're told that he is alone in the home. Troopers say that he doesn't live there, but he actually came there last night because he's got some connection to the people inside. He was able to get inside, but the people in that home actually left. That's how uh, state troopers tell us they know that he's alone inside. Right now they say that they're waiting on more resources. They're being cautious during this standoff. We know that hostage negotiators and the SWAT team with Indiana State Police are here on the scene as well as Dearborn County authorities and uh, members from uh, the Bright Fire Department. Uh, we will remain here on the scene. Again, they do not think there is any danger to the public. However, they are asking people in the area to stay away and to be careful and uh, we'll bring you any updates as soon as we get them from Indiana State Police. But for now, we'll send it back to you in the studio. It wasn't about baseball, you know, it was about protecting my teammates and, and you know, protecting this brotherhood. Two big breaking headlines surrounding the Reds this morning. Yasiel Puig reaches out to fans overnight and we're hearing from the team following this massive brawl with the Pittsburgh Pirates last night. Look at them piling on there. Not on your side, Jasmine Miner is live with the breaking details this morning, the reaction from the team and the latest on Puig. Jasmine. Yeah, Julie, you want to talk about a rivalry. You got that right there, and punishment is most definitely coming down from the MLB today to all of the players or most of the players involved in that five-minute brawl. And this comes just hours before the trade deadline at 4 this afternoon.
The Cincinnati Reds and Pittsburgh Pirates season-long feud intensifies. You can feel it brewing and brewing and brewing. Tomorrow is going to be for both team defense. The rivals meet for the series finale this afternoon following a five-minute fight. This is not a good scene at all. At the end of the day, it's about protecting your teammates, protecting yourself. This morning, several players are talking about the bench-clearing brawl. Tensions escalating in the eighth inning. David Bell gets tossed for arguing a strike call with Yaziel Puig at bat. Fast forward to the ninth, Reds reliever Jared Hughes ejected for hitting a Pirates player. And then Amir Garrett comes in to pitch and later exchanges words with the Pirates. The emotions got the best of me and you know, I was fed up with it. Sprints toward the dugout and throws a couple of punches sparking the brawl. Garrett is dragged to the ground before backup arrives, with Yasiel Puig joining in moments after reports of being traded to the Indians. This might be the last time you see him in a Reds uniform. We got his back and the game finished like that, a little hot, but we, it's part of the game, it's hot for the moment. And Now in all, five Reds players were ejected from the game. Excuse me, five Reds, four players were ejected from the game. Those four players are Bell, Garrett, Puig, pitcher Jared Hughes, and the bench coach was uh, ejected from the game. That is Freddie ben Benavidez, excuse me. Jasmine Miner reporting live downtown. Thank you, Jasmine. And now Yasiel Puig is confirming he is leaving the Reds, heading to Cleveland in a tweet. He says, it has been an honor and a pleasure to play for this historic team. Since the day I was traded from L.A., I felt the love from this city, and I've enjoyed every moment since then. Taylor Trammell will also leave the Reds and head to the San Diego Padres, and Cleveland Indians pitcher Trevor Bauer will be coming to Cincinnati. Bauer made news this week after throwing the ball over the center field wall when he was taken out of the game. What do you think? Not on your side wants to hear from you. Call the Feedback Friday hotline to voice your opinion, 513 852 4998 is the number to call. Craig McKee shares your thoughts every Friday evening at 6. Right now, an armed robber is on the run after targeting a local liquor store. Now the clerk is talking about her face-to-face -face encounter with him. Ryan Houston is here with the clerk's story. Julie, I know this clerk and she is very feisty. Carlita Banks says she acted on instinct after being held at gunpoint. The suspect took off and she chased after him. Now, the clerk says that the man seen here was trying to steal a bottle of alcohol from High Park Wine and Spirits by hiding it inside his shorts. Her co-worker was able to get the bottle away from the suspect. Banks says that the guy then held a gun up to that co-worker while she blocked the door. This fool just put a gun and I'm like, he about to get caught. You know, I was thinking like, I want him caught now. Some lady opened the car door and he told her like, Start the car, start the car, hurry up. Well, police believe uh, this man is 36-year-old Robert Snyder. They say he robbed the Saks Fifth Avenue downtown and Kimmy's Corner Grocery in Covington before pulling a gun on employees at this Hyde Park liquor store on Monday. Now, Covington police say Schneider is 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighs around 200 pounds. He is considered armed and dangerous, and if you can help, please call police. Julie. Thank you, Ryan. Covering Democracy 2020. Tonight, 10 more Democrats take the stage for the second Democratic presidential debate. The first night featuring no shortage of confrontation. ABC's Trevor Alt has details from Detroit. Night one of the Democratic debates in Detroit highlighting the internal struggle for the direction of the party, with moderate candidates challenging progressive leaders. It is with bad policies like Medicare for all, free everything, and impossible promises that'll turn off independent voters and get Trump reelected. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, both with similar agendas and the highest poll numbers of the candidates on stage, not backing away from their ambitious ideas. I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. <laughs> Dominating much of the debate, health care, particularly Senator Sanders' Medicare for All plan. For senior citizens, it will finally include dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. But you don't know Second that. of all, you don't know that, second Bernie. of all, we'll I, you in a second, I do know when I wrote the damn bill. Trevor All, ABC News, Detroit. Experience the dangerous object that came crashing through an Oregon couple's windshield as they drove on the highway.
It's 11 after 6. New this morning, a close call for a couple in Oregon. A metal saw blade flies off a truck, hitting their windshield. A witness describes the terrifying moment. She saw the blade go underneath her truck and hit that vehicle behind her. It went through the windshield on the driver's side, and apparently it must have hit either the steering wheel or the dash and made it veer off, and it hit his wife's leg. The couple is expected to be okay. The driver of the truck that was carrying the blade did stop. Still to come, one of the largest paddling celebrations takes over the Ohio River this morning. Why this event is so important to certain people. You're watching Good Morning Tri-State at 6 on 9 on your side. Well, the sun will rise here in about 10 minutes and actually come across the horizon. But this is that look to the east where you can already see that low level fog developing more out toward Lunkin Airport, the southeast side of town out toward Anderson Township. And then it gets a lot thicker as you go into Claremont, Brown, Adams County and pretty much all of northern Kentucky. This also spills out into Dearborn County. If you got heavy rain yesterday, you should expect fog this morning. It's a very kind of stagnant atmosphere that's not moving. We don't have much of a wind and the sky is mostly clear. So that's why Lunkin Airport is now down to pea soup fog status. Um, we've got a half mile out at Lunkin Airport north. Not as much, but I still wouldn't rule it out. I've heard some reports even up near Morrow of some fog developing there because we did see that swath of heavy rain up along 71 going past Sims Township through Loveland. So e even there as well, I would anticipate fog. So these are yesterday's rainfall totals, spots of more than two, some even up to three inches of rain and that sitting there on the ground. It's the perfect setup for fog. Now it won't be a huge issue. I don't anticipate it to slow down your morning drive and then the rest of the morning is partly cloudy. More clouds after lunch and new showers developing today. Now this really will though pale in comparison to yesterday's torrential downpours, but we will see those showers popping around the same time noon to one o'clock and then barely moving. There's not a lot going up going on higher in the atmosphere to push this rain along. And so that's why they barely move once they do start going uh, later on this afternoon and even into this evening. But the intensity not like yesterday. That's the kind of the big takeaway here, but I could see maybe an isolated kind of downpour here and there. Tonight will drop to 63, partly cloudy sky, some fog possible again, but not as widespread as what we're having out there this morning. And then tomorrow 83, but not humid. Oh, my friends, this is going to be a stretch. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I mean, even Friday following day, we're in the mid 80s, still not too humid. Guys, it's almost August. It starts tomorrow. It should be hot and humid, right? And actually it's a great forecast as well going into this weekend, mid 80s for both Saturday and Sunday. And if you are taking advantage of that tax free holiday weekend in Ohio, the weather is not going to give you an excuse. If anything, the kids will say, I don't want to go shopping. I want to go to the pool, you know, because school is got ready to start. Temperatures will stay in the mid 80s through the extended. So Cena, obviously fog is a big story, but also that wreck down on 7175, a huge thing as well. Yeah, and that delay has increased. We are following that breaking news 7175. The accident is at Kyle's Lane in the northbound lanes here. You see the red here and now extends to Buttermilk Pike. This backup. This is about a 20, 15, 20 minute delay right now. So if you want a detour, just take Dixie Highway up to Covington and that'll get you back on 7175. Here's a live look at the scene of the accident. You can see, oh, well, we're seeing less uh, flashing lights, which is a good thing. Maybe the accident is in the process of clearing, but the backup is definitely still there. Here's a look at north of Buttermilk Pike and you can see the slow moving traffic, but it is looking a little bit better than it was before um, where it was closer to a standstill, but we're still seeing, like I said, a 15 minute delay, uh, 71, 75 North, Julie. Well, they can glance over and look at the paddlers, you know. <laughs> Grab your kayak. It is time for Paddle Fest. This is the largest Paddle Fest in the nation. Not on your side, Jasmine Miner is live where people are gearing up for this. Jasmine. Well, Julie, they are already warming up for, like you said, the 18th annual Ohio River Paddle Fest. Look at that. They're already out here for the Sunrise Paddle. This is a pretty cool way to start your day. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually kind of jealous I'm not out there on the river right now. But with me now is Kirsten McDougall, who is the executive director of the foundation that this entire Paddle Fest helps out. Absolutely. Kirsten, thank you. Kirsten, thank you so much for being here today. Sure. But 
Talk about just how much this actually does because all the money raised here goes for teens to get them outside, right? Absolutely. It goes all of it to Adventure Crew. We are in 22 city schools in Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. We are serving nearly 1,000 kids. Every month we take these kids on a different adventure, whether it's kayaking, hiking, biking, skiing, and every weekend it's a different group of schools. So, and as I said, we're serving 1,000 kids. We're giving them an opportunity mm -hmm. to connect with nature, to do something that many of us really just take for granted. Okay, so I, I gotta ask you, because in the day and age where we've got social media, yeah. we've got Twitter, we've got Netflix, we've got so many other things in, that keep us inside. I mean, what does it do for the teens to be out even on the water, or just be outside. I mean, what is that like for them? Oh my gosh, these kids crave this. When they get the opportunity to go, we have kids that'll walk several miles from their home to catch the bus to get down to our buses just to go out wow. because they get out of their toxic environments and have an opportunity to just settle into nature, to disconnect from all that chaos of social media, as we all know is just running rampant within, in their lives. Um, and it gives them a whole new reset uh, and they become much more receptive to everything, their education and improving their disposition, their health, their happiness. And all of them in our surveys declare they just have more friends and they're happier. That's what nature does. I love that. I absolutely right. love it. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks, I really Jeff. appreciate your time. Sure. And guys, I mean, just look at that. Look how beautiful that skyline is. And the sun's coming up. Man, this is a good way to start your day. All right, I'm reporting live from the Ohio River. Jazza Miner, nine on your side. Ms. Miner in her happy place this morning. Speaking of social media, up next at six, a new policy. What Facebook is rolling out when it comes to alcohol and tobacco and who it'll impact. In this morning's GMA First Look, hero bus drivers. New video of two Milwaukee bus drivers rescuing two lost children within hours of each other on the same day. Cressida Neal was driving her route before dawn when she spotted a toddler walking down the sidewalk alone and barefoot earlier this month. Neal bringing the frightened boy onto the bus. You okay? Give me a hug. My mother instincts just kicked in right away. Then, just six hours later, driver Cecilia Nation Gardner spots a young girl wandering along the road in her pajamas, clutching a blanket. The girl soon reunited with her family, who were searching for her and arrived at the bus. I'm not trying to be a hero. I'm just a driver that love her job. That's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. There's a school out there that brings learning to life. Connections Academy uses technology to foster real learning and collaboration. Personalized, flexible, future ready, led by teachers who raise the bar. Connections Academy brings school to life. Finally, an egg of thick and fluffy waffle all to myself. Whoa. Karen, Karen, you gotta try this. Breakfast in bed, major husband points. Would you Lego your ego? The in-laws have moved in with us. And our adult children are here. So we save by using Tide. Which means we use less. Three generations of clothes cleaned in one wash. Anybody see my pants? Number one stain and odor fighter. Number one trusted. It's got to be Tide. So nice to meet you. June, Jane, G, K, Raj, and Ray. Good job, brain. Say hello to Nureva, a new brain supplement with clinically proven ingredients that fuel five indicators of brain performance. Nureva. 624 and happy first day of school to the kids over in Lawrenceburg. Now you guys are waking up to fog. Temperatures are in about the mid 60s right now and you'll continue to see temperatures even about the upper 60s even as the bus comes. So just a little heads up there. But yes, the fog is still happening. Our traffic cameras out there along the Ohio River and actually even just past the river continue to show that fog. This is I-275 uh, north at the Kentucky and Indiana border and Julie, no doubt there it's foggy. All right, new this morning, space, Jennifer, is not off limits as the backdrop for a future Fast and Furious movie. A spinoff of the franchise titled Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw hits the theaters this Friday. A screenwriter for the film says he is open to taking the story anywhere, including space. The only condition, he says the storyline has to stay true to its original spirit. All right, we're going to go back to Jennifer here. Uh, two major social media platforms are going to start limiting certain types of content for teens. Jennifer likes looking into these things for us as a mama. 
Yes. Uh, so tell us about this new policy rolled out. Jenny. I do like to call myself Mama Bear, but you know, the new policy will prohibit private sales, trades, transfers, and gifting. So we're talking about Facebook Marketplace of alcohol and tobacco on Instagram and Facebook. So the brands, they have to start restricting what type of content is available to those under 17. So selling tobacco and alcohol is already prohibited in the Facebook marketplace. The platform is extending its ban now to organic content. You know what that means. This also includes regular posts for private users. Facebook says it may remove any groups who do not make these necessary changes. Now, a spokesman for Facebook says that the company is also considering changes to its influencer policy, which truly really those are the celebrities who sometimes kind of front a brand uh -huh. or an image. So maybe even they will have to abide by this. Interesting. We'll see what happens. Thanks, Jennifer. Something good for your morning now. Video here of wounded veterans helping children with disabilities this week in Virginia Beach. Look at this. Members of the group USA Patriots have sustained severe injuries, so they teach kids who've lost their limbs how to play sports like softball. This is the seventh year the group has hosted this event. The guy here you're looking at, Josh Weege, says it's the best thing that ever happened to him to lose his legs because of what he can do here for these kids. Sticker shock still ahead, the extremist group that's posting messages in Fort Thomas and what one man is doing to try to curb the hate, as he says.